Hello, everyone. I am Carrie Brosmelia. I'm the Assistant Dean for Rural Medicine and Assistant Professor in the Department of Family Medicine here at SUNY Upstate. I'm here to talk with you today about the Rural Medical Scholars Program. Our mission is to identify, recruit, and nurture those interested in future rural practice. I work to identify and recruit small town applicants into the medical school, and I provide immersive, hands-on clinical and community exposure for rural matriculants, as well as their urban and suburban counterparts. I think it's important for all types of learners, all types of medical students to be offered the opportunity to try on rural practice during medical school because the severe shortage of rural physicians in these small town communities in New York State cannot be solved by solely relying on the rural born to fill the gaps we need in the care uh, for rural towns. So we are a small but mighty program. I serve as the program director, Dr. Ostrander. He's from Rushville, the Finger Lakes area. He serves as our medical director. And we also have a program assistant, Naomi Castillo Lugo. She is offering some support for our program as well as to the Department of Family Medicine. And importantly, we have medical students who serve as design partners and they oversee and sign off on every course and every session that we offer to medical students in the program. So this is a slide that looks at our curriculum. We offer four years of rural medicine electives, starting in year one, all the way through year four, and I'll briefly describe those courses. The courses are optional, they're not required, and students can opt in and opt out of courses in rural medicine, they're just electives, um, and they decide if they wanna take those electives as they move through their medical school uh, programming and training. The first course that a Rural Medical Scholars Program student, RMSP student, might take is Introduction to Rural Medicine. This course starts in August, your very first month of medical school, and it runs through February. Um, again, just in first year. We meet once a month, sometimes in person and sometimes via Zoom. Students meet with physicians and their patients across the state and we discuss health topics. These health topics might include Lyme disease, serving military families or patients with disabilities. We've talked about updates in telemedicine and so on. We always try to include a procedures and skills lab um, into one of our sessions. And we also like to include a session on vulnerable populations. So for credit, students attend the course but they also teach a small group of high school students from across the state um, a clinical case. So the teaching sessions are organized by the first years, but the material and the case is developed by our design partners. The high school teams participate um, each spring in a case competition, and the winning teams receive $100 per student and a plaque for their school. Okay, so you have a summer off between first year and second year. I like to say it's your last summer off for the rest of your life, but we offer in rural medicine three options for that summer, the summer after first year and before you start second year. The first course is our med light. This course, uh, students can work at their hometown clinical setting slash hospitals um, really, it's just to try to get a handle on clinical skills, history taking, physical exam skills, again, at either a home hospital system, or if you are not a New York State native or want to try out a rural medicine site, we have quite a few sites that will host a student for various numbers of weeks uh, over the summer, depending on what the student wants to get out of that experience. I think one of our best um, options for summer programming is Rural Immersion Week. This occurs the first full week of June each summer. Small groups of students live primarily in the North Country for just one week. They have dinners with local physicians. They gain tons of clinical experiences through outpatient, inpatient rotations. 
They engage with the community and take part in local recreational activities while living um, in the town for one week. The last class is design partners. So typically it's students that have gone through the first year curriculum and they work with me during the summer to recreate what we wanna do for the first years in introduction to rural health. They could create the clinical case that the high schoolers will learn or they can uh, create some of the teaching sessions for that, but they could also have their own project that they're interested in working on over the summer. So Design Partners is really great for students interested in medical education. So anyone who has a project where they might be evaluating aspects of the program or wanting to create a manuscript related to medical education. Second year. Our journey mapping course for second year medical students delves into the patient care through facilitated monthly sessions with community physician and their patient. So small groups of students are paired with one physician and one of the physician's patients. And the students get to know that patient and the patient's condition through guided in-person sessions. During that time, they practice skills related to interviewing, note-taking, case review, medical lab review, getting to really delve into the medical record overall, as well as discussion and physical exam and presenting their case. They also see firsthand the importance of the physician and patient relationship um, because we pick the right fit physician and patient that they can co-teach the, the patient's case um, which I think is a really important aspect of medical education, really learning education through the patient's perspective. Our students present uh, their cases at the annual Rural Medicine Student Symposium, which is held every uh, March or every spring each year. Okay, third year, ARMED. Third year is the RMED course, and it's our best and most well-known course. RMED has been around, or a version of it has been around since the 1980s, and we're kind of known for it. Um, students participating in RMED will complete an elective, which is the RMED elective, but that elective is also tied to a clinical placement for three out of the eight core clinical rotations that third year students do. So in third year, students complete eight core clinical rotations. My students who participate in RMED will do three of those, family medicine, surgery, and emergency medicine, as well as the RMED elective. So four courses over a period of about five months, what you and I would think of as the spring semester of their third year at a host community. Now I get a lot of questions about this and the answer is the students pick those communities. Uh, sometimes they go home to their hometown, sometimes they go to their immersion week town, or sometimes they try on a brand new site altogether. And again, we decide this in a year in advance. So in second year, we're talking about what students might want to do in third year. And then in third year, we're talking about what students might want to do in fourth year. So all along the path, students are opting in or they're opting out of these elective courses. Fourth year fourth year, medical students are figuring out what they want to do for the rest of their life. They're figuring out their specialty. They're figuring out where they are going to apply in terms of the match process for residency. So there's a lot going on in fourth year. We offer some options, particularly for students who are interested in family medicine, because our program is housed in family medicine. The first course is the ARMED AI or the ARMED Acting Internship. This is a community-based clinical course with the hope of preparing a student for what to expect in their first year residency uh, working in outpatient settings. So it's just a way to kind of build some skills before heading into residency. The second course is the Return to Basic Science course that's attached to the Journey Mapping course. So remember I said second years, they are paired with a patient and a physician. We also have a fourth year that comes in and this fourth year students helps facilitate the education for those second years 
tying it to what the second years are learning in their traditional coursework. Um, the fourth years will take a deep dive into the physiology of the disease uh, related to that patient and present a poster presentation during our annual student symposium, which again happens each March every year. Uh, finally, those students who participated in key rural medicine electives for all of the four years are eligible for a micro-credential in rural medicine. It means that they have to complete a capstone project in their fourth year. Capstone projects are related to one of four rural medicine focus areas. And what I mean by that is that there's four kind of threads that are weaved through all of our four years of education. The first one is clinical. So maybe the student will do a QI project, a quality improvement project that focuses on um, medicine and clinical practice. The second thread through all of our curriculum is culture, is understanding vulnerable populations or the unique communities that are relevant to our rural communities in New York State. The third is advocacy. So there is a lot of legislation and a lot of policy related to rural medicine. And a student could take a deep dive into any of those important issues and create a capstone project related to advocacy or related to policy. And the fourth one is teaching and mentorship. So we definitely love to have our fourth year students teaching our third year students, our design students, deciding what our first year students will learn. So mentoring one another uh, near to peer teaching, as well as teaching local high school students is an important part of our curriculum. So a capstone project might look into adding something important to our curriculum or creating a new teaching session altogether. So student capstone projects, like all of the other student projects are presented during our annual rural symposium, which again happens every March. And finally, that's it. So thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for taking time to take part in uh, this presentation. Um, happy to work with you anytime. If you have any questions, you can contact me through my email. You can look us up on Instagram to see what we're doing and what kind of new work is coming out of the program. And I'm happy to always uh, listen to you and be a source of um, I guess a partner with you as you as you move through this journey. So thank you so much. Bye bye.